President Donald Trump's budget request cut NASA's budget by nearly 25%. Oh no, the sky is falling. This is not the end of the story, folks. Let's keep in mind that the president does not have the power of the purse. Congress does. So it is truly up to Congress to decide what is being cut, where money is going to be allocated and spent, what's going to happen with the future of NASA, human spaceflight, science, and the rest of it. Some of this discussion is going to go into politics and the way government works. I'm not an expert in that, but I am an expert in space policy, and we have seen this story over and over and over again. This is not new. Presidents have for a while, including under the first President Trump administration, requested slashes in budgets under NASA. And time and time again, Congress restores those budgets because it is up to Congress to appease the voters in congressional districts or in states. So if you think that the senators and representatives in where I live, the space coast of Florida, in Houston, Texas, in you know, the Mississippi, in Huntsville, Alabama, in Maryland, in um, Pasadena, where JPL is, if you think they're all just gonna sit idle and say, yes, Mr. President, to this budget request to cut so much out of those uh, NASA centers or the NASA center itself, well, you're quite mistaken as to how this works because someone in the comments to my previous video, and if you haven't seen that previous video, I break down what the budget cuts are proposed to be, so you can watch that next. What somebody commented is that this is a negotiation. The president has this mandate to cut federal spending, and therefore the president is slashing federal agencies around the country, not just NASA. This is not NASA being targeted specifically, but there are parts of NASA that are being targeted specifically, and those parts are going to be up to Congress whether or not they want to fight for them. One easy example is that in the previous Trump administration, all four fiscal year budget proposals included cutting NASA STEM engagement STEM education, whatever the office was called at the time. And all four years, Congress allocated about the same amount of money to that office every year. I've seen so many people the past few days saying, there goes my job, there goes my career, there goes my future career. Calm down, take a deep breath, see what Congress does. Congress is going to fight for certain things, and you, by the way, can tell them what they should be fighting for if they are your elected representative. The president cannot decide just to cut a program without congressional support by law. During Jared Isaacman's NASA administrator nomination hearing, Senate hearing, there was a reason why Senator Ted Cruz kept harping on the law. Over and over again, he brought up the law in terms of lunar and cislunar presence, in terms of a presence in low Earth orbit, because Congress passes those laws, and Congress, especially Ted Cruz who's been in Congress and been like writing some of those laws and passing some of those laws and therefore Congress is going to protect the laws that are written and the programs within those laws. Currently in the law right now is the Space Launch System and Orion. Orion was in the law you know, back during Constellation program. SLS was created by the Senate, so much so that it was nicknamed the Senate Launch System. So you better believe that there are parts of Congress that are going to fight for SLS and Orion. We can look at a somewhat recent example that is the cancellation of the Constellation program. That was largely led by Congress. And within the NASA Authorization Act of 2010, which I will link down below, they actually specify to reuse stuff from Ares 1, that rocket that flew once it had issues, <laughs> but it did fly a test flight once, Ares 1X, repurpose that stuff, that hardware, that talent to other areas for SLS and Orion. Orion was the multi-purpose crew vehicle. It kind of survived from Constellation to where it is today. So within that NASA authorization budget, Congress decided to cancel Ares, to cancel Constellation essentially, to create a program that had to do with SLS and Orion. Back then it was called Exploration Mission 1 and 2 and 3, etc. It wasn't called Artemis yet. Another example we can point to is the Space Shuttle program. Space Shuttle was actually canceled by President George W. Bush in cooperation with the Congress. So Congress did not formally cancel it, but it was phased out of the budget due to congressional cooperation with the decision that President Bush made. Whether or not Presidents can just, by executive decree, cancel programs is being decided in the court right now. According to law, as it is currently understood, no, the president cannot cancel programs. This is beyond the scope of this video. So well, you cannot say for certain that if President Trump wrote some kind of executive order saying that SLS and Orion are canceled, 
Whether or not that would survive from the courts, I don't know. And then there's another thing that we need to consider, which is Congress often disagrees. The House disagrees with the Senate. And that is why we have a continuing resolution process. The Congress has not, in recent years, been able to agree on a budget before September 30th. And therefore, when the new fiscal year starts October 1st, we are often on a CR. In this case, we have a CR going on until September 30th of 2025. Whether or not both chambers of the Congress and the president can agree on the budget is to be seen. They are not going to shut down the government or go on a CR simply because somebody wants to save, let's say, a, a climate satellite. That, that's not going to happen. NASA is not going to be the reason why the budget is either approved or not approved. But let's just say that some of this goes forward. Let's just say that SLS and Orion are canceled after Artemis 3, which is seeming pretty likely at this point. Ever since like the first Trump administration under Jim Bridenstein, have they been talking and NASA has been studying their actual studies that NASA did internally to look at alternatives to SLS, commercial alternatives. So they were looking at things like Falcon Heavy. Um, New Glenn is currently on board. Vulcan is currently on board. Even looking at older rockets that I don't think are available anymore back then. They were looking at those. So NASA already has done the groundwork to see what they can do with going to the moon without SLS. Someone was concerned that Blue Origin's Blue Moon lander would be canceled under the current budget proposal. There's no evidence of that because it's not saying that Artemis is done after Artemis 3. It's not saying that Blue Moon can't fly on a different vehicle than SLS. All of that is to be worked out. All of that has already been looked at by NASA. So NASA just simply needs to update some of those studies based on recent happenings with what's going on with Vulcan, with New Glenn, with you know, Falcon Heavy, hopefully Starship coming online. All of those things just need to be updated and proposals need to be put out that are realistic. It'll be up to Congress to decide how much they want to micromanage NASA. And given history, Congress will probably micromanage NASA. Gateway is a, a gray area. I don't see a big champion for Gateway in Congress right now, so I don't know if, if Gateway is going to survive. My understanding is that under the Trump administration's budget, Gateway would be repurposed for something else, or at least the hardware would be, be repurposed, because there actually there is actual hardware. Um, so I don't know what that's going to look like, but my guess is that's probably not going to survive, and there's probably going to be another architecture which allows for lunar exploration, human lunar exploration, without stopping in this weird halo orbit that Gateway would be in. What about science, right? Um, so time and time again, and again, go back to the first Trump administration, if you don't believe me, and even under Biden, like time and time again, Congress has saved programs, even little tiny missions that they find to be important, whether or not they benefit the people in their congressional districts or states. Congress may decide they fund the same programs regardless of what President Trump wants. My guess is there are gonna be some cancellations within NASA science. I don't think it's gonna be as deep as proposed, but I am worried. I, I, I'm, my bias is science, right? There are certain things that the private industry can do really well, launch being one of them. There are certain things that do not have an immediate profit, and that would be fundamental space science. There are so many amazing NASA projects that just don't have a return on investment that private industry is just not gonna go do without government funding. And these are the things that make NASA great. These are the things that make NASA a worldwide leader. People pay attention when NASA is doing the impossible, quote unquote. Like people love that stuff. I get inspired by that. NASA funds this, our US government funds it because it's cool because great countries go out and explore. It's the new frontier. And so I personally think that it is worthwhile to spend my taxpayer dollars doing that. You may disagree. You may say we're in such debt, we need to cancel anything that's frivolous. I want them to keep on funding the programs that make NASA and make the United States a leader um, in the world, a leader in exploration. Because if we are becoming a spacefaring species, we need to understand what we're going towards. We need to understand the universe that we are surrounded by and inhabiting. And that means funding science appropriately. That means funding space appropriately. That means doing the things that no one else is doing. I am ramping up this YouTube channel in case you haven't noticed. And somebody recently told me I don't ask people to subscribe anymore. So please go ahead and subscribe if you like what you're seeing and you wanna see more. Thank you.